Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, as I said that uh, determination of this rate constant is very, very important and is one of the most important tasks of a chemical kineticist and a combustion chemical kineticist. There are many uh, high, very famous combustion chemical kineticists who are involved in determining rate constants from uh, theoretical calculations of course, uh, by, by computation and theory. Okay. So, we will talk about two basic methods by which uh, the collisional theory of reaction rate uh, and the transition state theory of reaction rates uh, using these two basic theories we can essentially compute rate constant. These are not these are uh, very fundamental methods and uh, uh, some of these gives accurate rate constant some of these does not give accurate rate constant, but it will give you a basic idea of how to estimate rate constant, but more importantly what this gives is that what is happening at a fundamental level. Okay. With this with this derivation of this rate constant we can understand that uh, what is how are these reactants actually going to form products, what is the mechanism. Okay. So, we always talk about this uh, this reacting with that, this reacting with this, but how does this reaction happen okay. and how do we develop a model to describe that uh, those, those uh, reaction rate constants. So, for this collision theory of reaction rate, okay, we will talk about, uh, uh, we will make several assumptions. We will assume that uh, this, uh, these molecules, this uh, which are like hard spheres as we see in assumption 2, they follow this equilibrium Maxwell Boltzmann velocity distribution. Okay. And number 3 is that reaction occurs, this is a very important assumption, reaction occurs if collision energy exceeds the activation energy. And by collision energy, we are only talking about translational uh, energy. Okay, that is two hard, essentially like two molecules, like two billiard balls. Two billiard balls comes and collides, and if the collision energy, if they have sufficient kinetic energy associated with this translation energy, and uh, if the translation energy large and greater than the activation energy of the reaction, then the reaction happens. Okay. We you see, but uh, first itself you see the basic uh, uh, inherent assumption is that even though reaction and formation of new molecules means arrangement and dearrangement of the different electronic structure, here we are considering none of that. That as long as the collision is hard and it exceeds certain the activation energy, new molecules are being formed. Okay, and uh, essentially this uh, activity will be centered on finding the collisional frequency. It is the number of in a given box how many collisions take place and that we will essentially you will see that we will associate that with the rate constant and that will give a very uh, nice enlightening answer. Okay. So, what is the requirement of collision? For collision of course, you see that this molecule comes and it must hit with this molecule. Okay. Of course, if they are head on collision is guaranteed, right? but if you replace this, this molecule with little bit offset this is still also guaranteed. So, the question is that what is the limiting condition in which collision is guaranteed? The limiting condition you will see is this where this molecule comes in this way this let us as you we can uh, consider instead of considering individual velocities of the molecules. So, we can consider that this molecule j of the species j is fixed and uh, the uh, that of the species i is moving and uh, mm, essentially the relative velocity with which the species i molecule approaches the species j molecule is essentially v i j. Okay. And for that the limiting condition which will guarantee a collision at least in some part here it will happen tangentially is that if these molecules if at least half of these molecules belong to a co collision volume. Okay. What is the collision volume? The collision volume is essentially this hypothetical cylinder which has a radius given by this. I will elaborate this. Okay. So, let us consider this as the central line of my molecule I okay. 
and for collision to happen it the molecule J must be situated somewhere here. Okay. So, that the center of this molecule J must lie within this domain within this volume which is this. Okay. And this is sigma i this is sigma i by 2 because sigma i is the diameter of this uh, of this uh, uh, molecule sigma j by 2 is the sigma i is diameter of this molecule sigma sigma i is the diameter of this molecule sigma i by 2 is the radius of this molecule similarly sigma j by 2 is the radius of this molecule. So, the at least the center of the second molecule must be contained inside this collision volume for the action to happen and then this one is moving at a velocity v i j which is the relative velocity. Okay. What is v i j? Now, v i j cannot be arbitrary okay. because as we have uh, said that we assume there is equilibrium Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So, then by Maxwell Boltzmann distribution v i j has a definite form which it comes from essentially the distribution of the velocities and from that pdf of the velocity we can obtain the mean velocity which is equal to 8 k 0 times t divided by pi times m i j to the power of half whereas m i j is equal to m i m j divided by m i plus m j is called the reduced mass. Okay. And in this definition of course, you see that k 0 is the Boltzmann constant t is the temperature pi is pi and m i j is the reduced mass. Okay. Now, so first let us as you find out the diameter of this collision volume okay. the, diam the, or the, or the, the volume what, or, or the, the diameter is of course, given by sigma i plus uh, sigma j what is the volume of this uh, what is the volume of this collision volume as such. The volume is given by is essentially the volume of the cylinder which is given say the Vc is given by then pi sigma ij square whereas sigma ij is essentially sigma i plus sigma j by 2 times V i j average. So, what this collision volume means is that it means that in one second these the second molecule must be inside this collision volume with respect to the first molecule. Where does V i j comes in? V i j is the distance covered in unit time. So, while this can be the separation in terms of their radius sigma i j plus by 2 in terms of their center to center distance they can be separated only by v i j in unit time no, sorry let us average on unit time. So, in a if there is has to be a collision in one second the criteria is that the second molecule has to be inside the collision volume of the with respect to the first molecule of i and it has to be the distance between these two can be at most v i j for collision to happen in unit time in a one second all right. Now, let us say we will just uh, remove Uh, we will uh, go all this and let us say now we are considering a box of unit volume V equal to 1 which can be 1 cubic meter 1 cubic centimeter etcetera. So, and this contains n i number of molecules of i and n j number of molecules of j all right. So, you see in V c volume which was given by 
pi sigma i j square times v i j there was one collision and it involved a collision between two molecules. Okay. So, basically for one molecule of i there was another molecule of j that guaranteed this collision. But in this volume v equal to 1 there are n j molecules of j. right? So, in this volume now v c the total number of molecules of j that is present is nothing but pi sigma i j square v i j times n j. Okay. So, these many number of things can happen that was a limiting condition in v equal to 1 there can be n j molecules. So, in v equal to v c there can be this many number of molecules of j and as such this many number of collisions of of the molecules of j with one molecule of i. right? So, for one molecule of i there are this many number of collisions happening. So, what is the total number of molecules of i now n i? So, the total number of collisions happening in one second is given by this pi sigma i j square v i j times n i n j okay. and that we will represent by this frequency called z i j which is the frequency of collision. We can also think that this in a different way we can also think that this volume v c is essentially sweeping through our unit volume. Okay. So, in one volume as I said in v equal to 1 there are n j molecules present. So, inside this v c volume there are in total this many number of molecules present. Okay. For so, there are for each one molecule of i there are this many number of collisions, but we have n i molecules of i. So, the total number of collisions between i and j is nothing but pi sigma i j square times v i j times n i n j. Okay. So, these are the number of collisions in unit volume bar unit time. Okay. So, this is the essentially called the collision frequency. Now, we will just uh, do this uh, little uh, um, we will shift gears and go through this analysis, but in this analysis the most important part is essentially this part and there is another conceptual part will which we will uh, see uh, immediately. So, what we have found is that we have defined this reduced mass m i j is equal to m i times m j divided by m i plus m j. We have defined a collision diameter sigma i j is equal to sigma i plus sigma j divided by 2 and we have defined got this collision velocity which comes from the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution which is given by uh, v i j is equal to uh, v i j mean is equal to 8 k 0 t divided by pi m i j to the power of half. And we have obtained the collision frequency for unit volume given by z i j is equal to pi sigma i j square n i n j times the mean v i j which is nothing but 8 k 0 t divided by pi m i j uh, to the power of half. Now, so there are in total per unit volume this many number of collisions are happening per unit time, but all collisions do not have sufficient energy. right? You remember the postulate the assumption number 3 that only those collisions which have an energy exceeding E a will result in uh, reaction. So, how many molecules how many numbers of molecules does exceed this energy E a that is given by Boltzmann distribution which says that this n i times n star by n is essentially given by e to the power of minus e star by r 0 t. Okay. So, we can define find out the collision frequency of those molecules which have got energy in excess of E a. So, we define the, that collision frequency is given by this z i j star and these are those molecules those number of molecules which have ex energy exceed of exceeding E a n i star and n j star and that is essentially if you substitute this guy 
into here for Ni star and Nj star you will find with this. Now, what is the collision frequency of Zij which, which results in reaction Zij star? That is nothing but your minus of dNi dt is equal to your minus of dNj dt. Going back to the generalized formula for species consumption rate that we have defined. Okay. So, uh, then we can equate this uh, to this and uh, <coughs> and uh, we can uh, we can essentially using that uh, we can equate this with this as we see and now we can relate ni with the concentration because ni is the number of molecules of i which if you divide by the avogadro number which is the total number of molecules present in a unit volume okay or a given volume as such we can find out the concentration and then as such we can relate dc i dt to omega what is the reaction rate and we find that the reaction rate is given by this okay this as you see this comes from the mean vij this comes from the diameter of the collision volume A comes from the conversion factor between between C and N concentration and numbers, and C I J C J comes from N I and N J N N I and N J star, and this comes from the fact that this comes from the fact that only those molecules, only those collisions, which have an energy exceeding E A, can result in reactions. And if you summarize this what you will get is a very nice looking relation which is at times c i c j and e to the power of minus e a by r 0 t. Now, does not this look this looks very similar to our expression of omega is equal to the of by the which we have obtained by the Arrhenius law as a times uh, which is uh, omega was like this right k for this k f times C i C j and that is equal to a times e to the power of if you put C i C j now C i C j times e to the power of minus e a by r t. So, this frequency factor if you compare between this one and the a t that has been obtained which is essentially this we find that the frequency factor is given by this formula. Okay. So, you see that this collision theory nice has a very nice uh, um, uh, correlation with uh, the uh, with the with the um, uh, with the Arrhenius law as such and the law of mass action. Right. So, uh, now, but now uh, unfortunately in some cases uh, for example, if you uh, consider something like a um, uh, like a reaction involving uh, say uh, hydrogen iodide decomposition of 2 H i something like uh, 2 H i uh, something like uh, if you see this reaction if you see say 2 H i goes to H 2 plus i. Now, if you compare the sigma for uh, sigma H i and if you find out the mass of the reduced mass of H and i and if you find the K 0 and if you find A 0, you will find that the reaction rates has a very nice uh, the reaction rate that you obtained from this uh, has a very nice uh, relationship with the experimental obtained reaction rates, but this is uh, not does not this is not always the case. Uh, the primary reason is that you see that we have made very simplified assumptions. We have made we have assumed that oh, as soon as there is a head on collision 
uh, that is enough to guarantee reactions, but reaction is much more. It as I said that reaction means in the change of the orbital structure, the electronic structure changes in during reactions, right. So, one molecules, one species becomes some other species. So, the electronic structure changes and also there can be other components of energy involved also. Uh, not only translation, there can be rotational energy involved, there can be a vibrational energy involved and also the molecules need not be hard spheres, right. In fact, most molecules say the hydrocarbon molecules, methane, ethane, propane, butane, all of these and even higher on they have very large complicated chain type of structures. So, this assumption that these two hard spheres uh, uh, collide and uh, immediately react when the Ea is greater than uh, Mm, when they are when they are uh, translational uh, collisional energy is greater than Ea, you know, that is a little bit uh, that is a little bit uh, too limiting an assumption and as such it does not uh, obey the, the theory all the time, but it gives you a very clear idea of how to approach this problem and what is essentially happening. And the deviation of this theory can be accounted from this uh, steric factor that is equal to z times i, but we will not uh, go into this here. 